Good morning, I'm Dr. Topia. Today we'll continue on, on our discussion on Cushing syndrome. Now we talk about the cause syndromes of Cushing syndrome. Clinical syndrome caused by increased cortisol in our body. We turn on of cortisol in our body. So the causes I can probably classify into the three. The first one is exogenous. These are people who are taking steroids for many reasons, and chronic steroid therapy. And the other ones are people with renal tumors. Yeah, these are people who have tumors on their adrenal who are separating uh, cortisol to their body. And the other one are paraneoplastic. These are people that will stimulate the adrenal tumors to secrete more cortisol and uh, Cushing's disease. And these are people who have uh, acetate secreting pituitary tumor. So, and like I said in the earlier video, hypothalamus will uh, stimulate the anterior pituitary to make ACTH by corticotropin releasing hormone and the ACTH will stimulate the adrenals to make cortisol by ACTH. And the uh, hypercortisolism in our body has a negative feedback inhibition of the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. So let's talk about the above two. The above two. So in exogenous uh, corticosteroids or people who are taking corticosteroids for many reasons the cortisol amount in their body will be high and like i said it has negative feedback inhibition of the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary it will decrease the amount of acetate secreted so in people who are taking exogenous uh, corticosteroids the amount of acetate in their body will be low the amount of acetate will be low also in adrenal tumors, adrenal tumors will secrete more cortisol and the cortisol will negatively inhibit the anterior pituitary and thus it will decrease the amount of ACTH produced. So the same token, adrenal tumors will have also decreased amount of ACTH, decreased amount of ACTH in their body. So these are the two um, causes where, whereby Cushing syndrome is caused in the amount of ACTH in their body is low. But, Let's talk about paraneoplastics and the Cushing syndrome. So these are tumors who are secreting ACTH and the tumor by itself is secreting ACTH and then in their serum they have increased amount of ACTH. Because paraneoplastic like small cell lungs, part of their paraneoplastic syndrome is secretion of ACTH and that will stimulate the adrenals to make cortisol and Cushing's disease is a pituitary tumor which by itself secretes adrenocorticotropin hormone which in turn activates adrenals and making cortisol so these two causes the ACTH will be high and the above causes exogenous and adrenal tumors the ACTH will be low so these are the dis distinguishing factors let's talk about the above two the adrenal tumor and the exogenous corticosteroids so you know we have two adrenal tumors two adrenal tumors one in the right and one in the left when there is exogenous uh, corticosteroid therapy, they have increased cortisol and that in turn, like I said, will decrease the production of ACTH. And decreasing decrease the production of ACTH is supposed to inhibit both glands. And in the long run, people who run on exogenous corticosteroid therapy, the glands atrophy. They atrophy bilaterally because the effects will be seen on both adrenals. What about an adrenal tumor? It's the one on the left of the tumor and it's, sec it's secreting cortisol. So the, the, the amount of cortisol secreted will inhibit the ACTH secreted from anterior pituitary and the ACTH will be low. So the glands will be inhibited from making more cortisol but this one is actively secreting because of the tumor but the other one will be inhibited. So in patients with adrenal tumors, the uninvolved or the, the gland with no tumor will be atrophied. Atrophied. But in exogenous corticosteroid therapy, both of them will atrophy, and in adrenal tumor, the animal will be atrophied because of the effect of um, the, one of the tumors secreting the cortisol in negative inhibition by acetate. And the paraneoplastic syndromes and the Cushing's disease, ACTH is supposed to increase. And this other cause of um, Cushing syndrome. So now let's talk about diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. So Cushing syndrome, like I said, is increased in amount of cortisol in our body. So we can't just measure the amount of cortisol in our body and say that it's high or it's low because the first reason why is because the amount of cortisol in our body will vary in, in time of the day. So it has a circadian 
circadian pattern of secretion. So the amount of cortisol in our body is is highest highest right before bed, and it's the lowest in the morning. So it depends on the on the time of the day. Then its cortisol is found bound to cortisol binding globulin and the amount of cortisol binding globulin varies in, from people to people and in some instances like pregnancy the amount of cortisol binding globulin will be high you can't just measure the amount of cortisol in the body and say yeah, they have Cushing syndrome or not so have um, special uh, patterns of uh, measurement of the amount of cortisol that we need to measure to establish the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome so let, there are three ways to measure the amount of cortisol in our body. The first one is a 24-hour urine collection. This will tell us generally and the amount of cortisol in our body. And, uh, it will uh, rule out the time barrier, like I said. It, it will vary between the hours of the day and time of the day. But 24-hour urine collection of cortisol will um, all in all tell us um, how it is the person has um, the amount of cortisol the person has overall throughout the day. The other is the amount of cortisol in our body, in our saliva. In our saliva. We measure the amount of cortisol in our saliva because there is no cortisol binding globulin in, in saliva. So we can we can eliminate the cortisol binding globulin barrier. So there is no cortisol binding globulin in saliva, so we can measure the amount of cortisol in our body and usually this is done at late night late night because in late night right before bed is supposed to be lowest and um, it's supposed to be the lowest and there is no cortisol binding all the way in and so the patient with, um, with the normal patient we should have the lowest amount of cortisol in their body in the saliva at late night but if a person has Cushing syndrome and supposed to have increased cortisol in their saliva at midnight. The other is the low dose dexamethasone suppression test. Low dose dexamethasone suppression test. And this, um, and this test will give them low dose, low dose dexamethasone, which is a steroid. It's supposed to decrease the amount of ACTH produced in our anterior pituitary and supposed to decrease the amount of cortisol in their body. How to do it is do it is we'll give them a lot of dexamethasone at bedtime. At bedtime. And throughout the night, if you give them at bedtime throughout the night, it's supposed to decrease the amount of ACTH in their body and in the morning it should have been low. But if a patient have a Cushing syndrome, they will have increased amount of cortisol in their body in the morning. So we give them a lot of dexamethasone at night and we measure in the morning. Well, these are the three diagnostic tests that we use to establish the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. So we can measure the 24-hour urine collection in the amount of cortisol, and the other is the amount of cortisol in the saliva at midnight, and the low dose dexamethasone suppression test that will be given in the midnight and measured in the morning. So if you know this test is, uh, shows increased in the amount of cortisol, we can suspect the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome. But like I said, there are a lot of causes of Cushing syndrome that we should tell apart, and so there we should further investigate and tell which one is which. There, once we have uh, established the diagnosis of Cushing syndrome, we can further investigate and tell which one is the cause of cortisol if it is exogenous uh, adrenal tumor, paralysis, or Cushing's disease. The first thing that we should uh, do is measure the amount of ACTH. If it is low, it's either exogenous ex uh, corticosteroid use or an adrenal tumor. And I have earlier mentioned how to differentiate between the exogenous secretion of um, exogenous uh, uptake of corticosteroid and adrenal tumor. And then now let's talk about paraneoplastic and Cushing's disease, how to differentiate them. For this, we do the high dose dexamethasone the high dose dexamethasone test the high dose dexamethasone test is like uh, the low dose dexamethasone test we give them at midnight but the dose is higher so in high dose dexamethasone test the anterior pituitary would respond uh, even though it has a, a, a tumor if it, if it does have a tumor it will respond to the pituitary tumor would 
respond to this hydrodex amethyst suppression test in the morning measurement they have decreased the amount of cortisol but if it's an ectopic production of ACTH even with hydrodex amethyst suppression test persistently elevated cortisol in their body in the morning measurement this is how we tell apart um, between a ectopically ACTH secretion tumor and um, pituitary adenoma. The other study is we can do the CRH study. We can measure the amount of CRH and the amount of CRH will be high in in Cushing's disease. The amount of CRH will be high in Cushing's disease and it will be low in ectopic. So this we can use as an alternative but can use the hydrodex amethyst suppression test between the telepath part between pituitary tumor and ectopic ACT secreting a paraneoplastic tumor. So this is how to diagnose Cushing syndrome and the cause of Cushing syndrome. I have, hope I've made Cushing syndrome clear for you and um, I, I think you would use this in your clinical practice or really clinical studies and thank you very much. I hope you have a good day. This is Lasso Dutch.